Hello and welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a B.Tech applied science lesson and it's unit one chemistry. The focus is electronic orbitals and Bohr theory. Please make sure we like and subscribe to get these videos out to as many people as possible. Let's begin with some prior knowledge then. So from GCSE you should be aware of atoms consisting of protons, neutrons and electrons. The idea that protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus, which is at the centre, and that makes up almost all the mass. Electrons are then found orbiting this nucleus in electron shells. So if we were to take lithium as an example, lithium would have three protons and four neutrons in its nucleus. We would then have the first shell with two electrons, and then there would be a second shell with one electron. And this electron configuration would be called 2, 1. And this was the Bohr theory from GCSE, where we looked at electrons orbiting a nucleus in specific shells. So let's look at shells in a little bit more detail. Electron shells can hold a maximum number of electrons. Now, this is a little bit different from GCSE, but don't panic. The first shell can hold two, that's fine. The second shell can hold up to eight, and that's still the same. Unfortunately, you were lied to a little bit about shells three and four because you were led to believe that they could also hold up to eight. So I'm very sorry you were lied to there. The third shell can actually hold up to 18. The fourth shell can hold up to 32, and the fifth shell can hold up to 50. Now, we don't have to memorize these numbers. There's an easy way we can work it out. We can use a 2n squared rule where n is the shell number. So for example, the third shell, we do 3 squared, which is equal to 9. 2 times 9 is 18, so the third shell can hold 18. Why don't you try it for the fourth and fifth shells to see that we get 32 and 50. So we now know that not all shells will hold the same number of electrons. So we're going to look at shells further. So shells are actually made up of subshells. There are four different types of subshell, and we call these S, P, D, or F subshells. Four different subshells can hold a different number of electrons. An S subshell can only hold two electrons. A P subshell can only hold up to six. A D subshell up to 10, and an F subshell up to 14. We can actually use the periodic table to help us remember the number of electrons in each subshell. Now the periodic table can be split into blocks. We have the S block on the left, the D block in the middle, and the P block on the right. If you were to count the number of atoms wide for each block, you'll see that the S block is two atoms wide. You'll see that the D block is in fact 10 atoms wide, and you'll see the P block is six atoms wide. And that corresponds to the number of electrons in each subshell. This block down the bottom that we never really talk about is known as the F block, and that's in fact 14 atoms wide. Mind blown. Now we can look at these subshells in a little bit more detail. So subshells, whether it's an S, P, D or F, are made up of orbitals. An orbital is defined as a region of space that can hold up to a maximum of two electrons. And the four different types of subshell have different shaped orbits or orbitals. S orbitals are spherical and P orbitals are what we'd call dumbbell shaped. So we know the number of electrons in each energy shell or each shell. 2, 8, 18 for the first three. We also know that these shells are made up of subshells, either S, P, D or F. And we know the number of electrons in each subshell, 2, 6, 10, 14. We also know that an orbital is a region of space that can hold up to two. So the S subshell only contains one orbital. The P subshell contains three orbitals. The D subshell contains five orbitals. And the F subshell would hold or contain seven orbitals. That means the first shell then is just an S subshell, because it only contains two electrons. And we call this the 1S. One just tells us it's the first energy shell, and S is telling us it's a 
S subshell. The second can hold eight electrons, which is four orbitals. Now, four orbitals would be an S and a P. Now, two S and two P, that doesn't mean there's two of them. The two just denotes that it's the second shell. So the second shell is an S subshell and a P subshell, which is a total of four orbitals. The third subshell can hold up to nine, and that it consists of an S subshell, a P subshell, and a D subshell. Five plus three plus one is nine orbitals, which is 18 electrons. To summarize then, we know that shells is where electrons can be found orbiting the nucleus. We now know that they are made up of subshells. And those subshells, there's four different types. There's the S, the P, the D, and the F. An S orbital is spherical. A P orbital is dumbbell shaped. These subshells are made up of orbitals. And an orbital is a region of space that can hold up to two electrons. Thank you for watching and make sure you check out the next video on Aphbau principle and electron configuration. You'll find the link in the description below.